Hello, Joe O'Connell, Sam Popper Palm. Today we're going to show you how to put an airing kit into our SO5 Metallic. Today we'll be using Sandpiper Genuine Parts. Out front we have examples of our Sandpiper Wet End Kit and our Sandpiper Air End Kit for our SO5 Metallic. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during this presentation please pause this video until you've completed any phase of the process. The pump we're using today has been built new and it's considerably easier to work with than a pump that's been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts, Wet End and Airing Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warner Up video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. Our air end rebuild today will consist of main air valve, pilot valve, U-cup seals, actuator plungers, and gaskets. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, needle nose pliers, sockets and or wrenches, one half inch, 9 16 inch, 3 quarters inch. Let's get started. For video purposes, we're going to use a 3 8 inch impact gun for assembly and disassembly. We're going to start by taking off the discharge manifold. Once you have the bolts loosened and removed, go ahead and set the discharge manifold aside. Take the seats and the check balls out. Flip the unit over and take the suction manifold off. Once you have those bolts loosened, you can go ahead and set the suction manifold aside. Take the seats and the check balls out. Now we're going to take one of the chambers off. Loosen the bolts. You have two blind holes on the inside there. Move the chamber, set the chamber aside, and you can loosen the diaphragm assembly. You may get the diaphragm rod to come out with the assembly, that's okay. In this case, the assembly came off of the rod. And you want to take off the other outer chamber. With the outer chamber set aside, you can remove the diaphragm rod and assembly. Now we'll take off the main air valve assembly. You can discard the assembly and the gasket. Now we'll take off the air inlet cap. You want to retain the air inlet cap, but you can discard the gasket, pilot valve, and the gasket below. Now we'll remove the U-cup seals. 
pair of needle nose, reach in and just pull the U-cup seal out. I'm going to do that on both sides. Now push the actuator plungers out. They'll come out through the pilot valve port. Pull those out and discard. Next we're going to remove the actuator plunger bushing, star ring, and o-ring. With a small screwdriver, remove the actuator plunger star ring. And then the bushing. You may need something to wedge into the bushing. Here we're using a pair of needle nose pliers. Small wood screw will also work. And then the actuator plunger o-ring. You want to repeat this for the opposite side. Remove the star ring. The actuator plunger and the O-ring. And you can discard all those components. Now you want to inspect the center section and inspect the machine faces and radiuses for damage or material buildup. Now we can go ahead and open up our airing kit and set the components out. First we're going to install our U-cup seals. You want to apply a light amount of grease to the U-cup seal. Grease is applied to keep the items from catching, binding, or cutting while assembling components. Make sure you apply a little grease into the bore that the U-cup seal sits inside of. U-cup seal has two faces, a flat face and an open face. The flat face goes in towards the center of the pump. You want to push it into the receiver port there, and then you want to work the U-cup seal in to make sure that it's fully engaged all the way in the port. And you want to do the same thing for the other side. Again, the flat face goes towards the center of the intermediate. Next we're going to install our new actuator plunger o-ring bushing and star ring. You want to put a little grease into the receiver port, just a light amount of grease. First we're going to drop in our o-ring. There is a receiver port at the bottom of that bore for the o-ring. You want to make sure you get it fully set into the port. Then the bushing, there's no top or bottom to the bushing, you can go in either way. Press it in there. Then our star ring retainer. Star ring retainer is concave. You want the open cup of the retainer to go upwards. You want to center it into the bore and then you want to press it down in there. Once you get it pressed down in there, you want to make sure that all the fingers on the star ring are below the lip in the bore. There is a small lip and you want to make sure that's fully engaged down into the bore. And you want to repeat the process for the opposite side. Again, pushing in your o-ring, make sure it's fully engaged into the bottom of the bore, then your bushing, and then your star ring. Next you want to insert your actuator plungers. Apply a little grease to the actuator plungers. And then through the pilot valve port in the intermediate you want to access the actuator plunger bore. Pushing the actuator plunger through the hole. It will go through the o-ring, the bushing, and the star ring. 
You want to do this for both sides. Now we'll install our pilot valve. You want to push the actuator plungers out of the way. Make sure you do that. Our pilot valve is pre-lubed. You can pop the spool out and just check it. Make sure there's light amount of grease on the O-rings there. Our pilot valve gasket goes over the mast on the pilot valve. Can go in either direction. Pilot valve can go in either way also. Just make sure that the actuator plungers are pushed out of the way and that the pilot valve is not sitting on top of them. Next our air inlet cap gasket goes on either direction and then using our original air inlet cap set that on top of the stack up. It can go in either direction. Thread in our four bolts once we do that, we can torque them down in a crossing pattern to the torque specifications that you find in the service and operating manual. Next, we'll install our new main air valve assembly. Gasket can go on either way. Just want to make sure that you line up the bolt holes in the intermediate. Main air valve can go on either way also. Thread the four bolts in. Then you want to torque those down in a crossing pattern. Go ahead and put your new bumper onto the rod. Then you want to put a light amount of grease onto the rod. And you also want to install a light amount of grease into the intermediate on the U-cup seal and the bearing. Go ahead and put the assembly into the intermediate. And line up the bolt holes on the diaphragm with the bolt holes of the inner chamber. Next we're going to install our outer chamber. You want to inspect the outer chamber, inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. Replace the chamber if necessary. When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. Thread your bolts in, make sure you tighten all the bolts down in a crossing pattern. Next we're going to flip the unit over, I'm going to go ahead and install the, the bumper and thread your second diaphragm assembly down onto the rod. And You want to torque that. When torquing, if you do not achieve hole alignment on the torque, you always want to go forward with the diaphragm. You want to continue tightening until you achieve hole alignment. You never want to go backwards. Once you have the holes aligned with the inner chamber, reinstall the second outer chamber. Remember to inspect the second outer chamber. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring scratches or material buildup can be cleaned up by using memory paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Ensure the radius on the inside of the chamber is maintained during cleanup. When aligning the outer chamber, be sure that the discharge port faces the nameplate. Thread your bolts in and then tighten them in a crossing pattern. 
On the suction side, you want to drop in your check balls and install your seats. Seats have no top or bottom. They can be installed in either direction. Next, we're going to install our suction manifold assembly. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring damage or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace is needed. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. You want to thread the bolts in. You want to tighten them down. Once you get them tightened down, you'll see that there is a gap between the suction manifold and the discharge manifold. This is okay. Flip the unit over and we're going to go ahead and install our discharge seats and our discharge check balls. Take the discharge manifold assembly. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. There are two bolts. The shorter bolts go on the inside. The longer bolts go on the outside. Tighten all eight bolts down in a crossing pattern. There will be a gap between the outer chamber and the elbow. This is not a defect, it's okay. You will not be able to compress the elbow to the outer chamber with a face-to-face -face connection. That completes our airside rebuild of our SO5 metallic. If you're doing a complete rebuild, you'll want to see our video on the wet side. Or for additional information, find us on the web at sandpiperpump.com or contact after sales support at service.warnerup at idexcorp.com. Thanks.